So today I'll be showing you how I built this mini tank. So I did another tank video a little while back, but I'm going to do another one basically for two reasons. First of all, I did not go into as much depth as I would have liked about how I actually built the base of the tank. And secondly, I didn't have this nice cover for the tank back then. But without further ado, let's jump right into it and I'll show you how I built the tank. So here we have the tank broken down into really its most fundamental part and that is the chassis. So the frame itself is made out of aluminum and oak wood. As you can see the side is 3 quarters of an inch by 5 inch long of aluminum strips. And both strips are held together by two oak wood blocks. In the back of the chassis we have two servos. These are our drive motors. They are continuous looping servos which we connect directly to the tank treads. So if we get a good side view of the chassis, you can see we have a servo here which connects to one of our track wheels. We have a hole right close to the front which connects to one of our other track wheels. And then these other three holes are for the screws that hold the spacers here in place. And then lastly on the bottom of the chassis we have acrylic plastic and that serves as kind of like a shelf to hold all of our batteries and receivers. So next we can move on to the tank treads. So the tank treads I'm using are actually Lego treads. I bought these off eBay. Uh, I came with two tank treads and then six track wheels. The whole set cost probably about eight bucks. And so as you can see here, what I've done is I've taken a small servo gear and I've glued it to the inside of one of my track wheels. That way we can just attach the wheel to the servo and actually get a pretty decent mount. All we'll have to do now is get the little screws that came with the servo and then just screw this wheel into the servo itself. And then for the front track wheel, what I did is I drilled out the center just large enough so that it could freely rotate on a 1 8th of an inch bolt. So in a minute we're going to want to drill in our front track wheel into this hole that is 4 inches from the servo. But before we do that we're going to want to put some spacings or washers on our front wheel. Because if you look at the back wheel there's a little bit of space from our back wheel to the side of our chassis. So we're going to want to put washers on the front wheel to mimic that spacing. That way the track will stay on nice and tight and it won't jump off. For me I have found that two blue connect spacers work magically. So now we found our spacers, we can now go ahead and screw in our front track wheels into the chassis. So we'll check this over one more time and make sure that both sides line up well, and they do, and make sure the front ones rotate freely. And if they do, which this one does, we can then move on to the next step and put on the tank treads. So to put on the treads, what we want to do is take off both back wheels. Put the back wheel in the tread, connect the tread to the front wheel, and then pull it back and mount it on the servo motor just like that. Now once that's done, go ahead and screw it in place. So once the tracks are on, we can now go ahead and put in our battery pack and receiver and plug everything in. As you can see, my wires are kind of all over the place, so I'm going to take a little bit of electrical tape and tape them down so it's easier to manage. And now with that, the base of your tank is complete. So the tank base is done, but it doesn't look much like a tank. That's why I built this. So I built this out of Lexan plastic and one of the coolest things about this is that the turret actually moves. I buried a servo in the body of the tank and that operates the turret head. So we should be able to plug the servo into the receiver, pop this cover on the tank and have a functional model tank. So here it is, everything put together, the little tiny tank. And there you have it, my homemade tank. And if you're wondering, I'm using the same transmitter that I did for my BattleBot, and that is a Spectrum DXE. Also, I'll leave the links for the servos I used and the LEGO tank treads in the description below. I know I didn't do a whole lot of driving with this tank, but this video is supposed to just take a more in-depth look at how I built the base of the tank. But if you'd like to see the tank in action, see everything can do, click this box right here. And really, more than just a tank, I think this is a wonderful platform that you can build all sorts of different creations and all-terrain robots from. Thank you so much for you guys watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next week.
Thank you for watching, and please feel free to subscribe.